Hey folks, it's Tony Fortune out from the technology firm. Today we're going to go through a neat little baseline with a utility I like to use called HTTP ping. HTTP ping. Woo, got it. So it uh, does response time stuff. I'll show you in a second. And I want to just compare it against what we get on the wire just to show you a little example on how to baseline something. So enjoy. I'll put the URL for the software on the in the article so you can just go and copy paste. But it's at coretechnologies.com. And you'll see right up at the top, HTTP ping, it's free, download, off you go to the races. There's nothing to install, which again, I love portable apps. You just put it on USB key, whatever you want, and off you go to the races. So I downloaded it, I went to the command prompt, I went HTTP ping something, captured it with Wireshark, and I'm going to compare apples and apples. All right, so here's a typical example of what I use HTTP ping for. Ah, awesome. This is my third take, and I finally got it. And you'll see here I've got uh, HTTP ping, www.thetechfirm.com, dash lowercase o, testing123. So if this works, I should see this payload in the packet. That's kind of important. And off you go when you go and ping something. It's telling you that it's doing a post. You can also do a head if you like. And you can see the response times here. Looks pretty cool. I like the fact it gives you deviation as well. But what is it really like on the wire? Let's find out. So the first thing we're going to validate is did that dash O work? And I should see testing one, two, three in the packet. And if you take a look, sure enough, testing one, two, three. Um, this is incredibly important only because when you put payload in a packet, you have to understand, is it going to put padding around it? Does it put some sort of signature in front of it or after it? You need to know what's in the packet. And in this case, it literally just put the data that I wanted, which is kind of nice. That's it. So pass that one. Check. All right. Quick disclaimer. There's got to be dozens of ways of doing this. All right. This is not the only or correct way. It's just my way. You can do it any way you like. The key here is as long as it's documented and consistent, it is correct. There. How's that? So if we take a look at the response, you'll see the time since request value within the detail pane here. Time since request. And you can see 36 milliseconds. If you want, you can just right click on this. You can apply it as a column and then it'll appear as a column within your packet list. So that's kind of cool. So now with a packet list, having that up there, I don't need to go look inside of it anymore. I can just see it on the list itself. So that helped me get the numbers fairly quick for the HTTP response time. Originally, I was going to go on a couple of more slides on this, but I don't think so. I think this will pretty well prove the point and I'll leave it at that and I'll leave it up to you. So there's our HTTP ping response time reported by the utility 94 78 78 78 milliseconds and Wireshark as far as we're concerned when we sent our post and got our OK back 38 35 37 36 milliseconds and now the questions start well are they measuring the time including the three-way handshake are they including the fin at the end of the conversation all that stuff now please be careful you don't want to measure the duration of this right we're measuring the response time so if you wanted to look at for example TCP you might look at the TCP response time as well in this case they were all like 30 36 32 millisecond 30 ish milliseconds so it was just a little bit faster than HTTP which is what you would expect right so the 94 78 78 78 it's not so much trying to explain why that number exists it's just trying to illustrate to you this tool reports it this way go on the wire you'll see a different response so pick the way you want to measure your response time with whatever tool you want and you should be good to go have a great day folks bye for now